Okay, so welcome to um, Lunch and Learn, our second session. And joining me in hot seat today is uh, Stuart. So Stuart Kerr, one of our physiotherapy team. So many of you will uh, know him, recognize him, and um, heads up and um, scan and injection clinic, which we're going to talk about today. And he's also clinical director here at Life at Wellness. So thank you, Stuart, for um, taking the time out to, to, to join us today. So, and um, you obviously you watched last week, so it's no surprise that I kind of launched into things with a few quick questions, and yeah. um, just to get your brain sort of taken over and to, to get that wider um, aspect of things. So, um, I'm going to ask you a few preferences, and yeah. then see if we can get to know you better this way. So, um, are you a, a wine or beer man? Oh. <laughs> Difficult <laughs> question to start yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> Wine at the moment. Wine at the moment. Okay, we'll go with that. What about sticky toffee pudding or cheese platter? Cheese. Okay, right. Would you say you're a creature of habit or more spontaneous? Uh, I would say work. Creature of habits, uh, home, maybe a wee bit more spontaneous. Okay, and home will be watching this, so yeah. you can check in later. If you had the choice, um, a weekend city break or would you go hill walking for a weekend? What would you do? Uh, I think at the moment it has to be uh, a weekend city break. We can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can't do it. And are you a salt and sauce man in your chips or a salt and vinegar man? Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar. <laughs> okay, so we've got the important facts out of the way first. Okay, so I'd, I'd say it obviously, or today is about um, our scan and injection clinic. So Stuart, you, you head that up. Yeah. And um, so we want, want to really talk um, a bit about this. And um, I suppose we're guilty of kind of running it all at, off our tongue as one thing, scan and injection. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna break it down. We'll talk about the scan and we'll talk about the injection and get a bit more information about that. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, what sort of scanning are you doing? Okay, so it's ultrasound scanning. Okay, and, and what is an ultrasound scan? So most people will be familiar with ultrasound scans from baby scanning. And essentially that is using high frequency sound waves to generate a picture in short. And it's very akin to sonar that may be used in submarines. So it sends out a sound signal and those waves are uh, reflected back and that is uh, received by a transducer and that uh, is very cleverly interpreted and generates an image. Um, so essentially it's, it's using sound waves to create an image. Okay. And, and what sort of things are you scanning um, here in clinic? So I am a musculoskeletal sonographer. We touched on what musculoskeletal yeah, is last right. week. But yeah. basically, to reiterate what David said, that's looking at um, structures related to bones, um, tendons, ligaments, uh, muscles, and nerves as well. Um, and, and also cartilage, actually, uh, in there is... Um, and, and specifically, I focus on the limbs, so everything from shoulder to the tip of your fingers and from the hip to the tip of your toes. Okay, so that has clarified um, that. And then that's kind of cleared up about what you're scanning. So I'm um, just to be clear, so you can scan someone and not necessarily inject them, is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. That, that is quite common, so, you know, at the moment, I'm, I'm probably performing somewhere in the region of four to 500 scans a year, mm -hmm. um, and probably injecting somewhere in the region of 300. So okay. there's probably a, around about 200 that, uh, and, and people that are performing just a diagnostic scan. Okay, but those who may well have booked themselves in or being referred for a scan and injection, and it's only then when you scan and you discuss with them, look, I'm not seeing indications yeah. here that an injection's needed, is that? Yeah. Precisely, and, and uh, injections is one intervention, if you like, but the, the scanning helps to provide additional information. And it's important to recognize that it is just additional information um, uh, alongside the, the history of the problem. Um, and a good for a clinical examination as well. And, then, and only then do we work out, is an ultrasound scan going to be appropriate? Because there are plenty of people actually who will come to see me with the notion of uh, an ultrasound scan, but actually it's just not really going to add any value whatsoever. 
Um, and in those circumstances, you have a conversation about that and, and about what ultrasounds can and can't show. Um, it is a, it's an excellent imaging modality, it's very versatile, but there are certain things where either we don't need imaging at all, or actually other imaging would be more appropriate. And you can guide folk on that. You can guide folk on that, whether it be an entry or an MRI, right. CT scan, um, that type of thing. So let's touch then on injecting. So um, what are you injecting? There's a few different substances yep. that you might be injecting. So run us through those. So mm -hmm. the, the, I suppose the, the, the primary one that most people have heard of is cortisone or steroids. Let's give it its full name. You ready for okay. it? Ready? Glucocorticosteroids. Okay. okay. So they are a particular classification of steroids. that from their clinical clinical history but yeah. also that's mm -hmm. an important point is that ultrasound can actually help us to determine the presence of that inflammation so inflammation is a very specific uh, presentation and uh, just because you have pain that may relate to a joint or a tendon doesn't mean that it's actually inflamed you can have other um, pain mechanisms if you like that, that can so like mechanical Mechanical pain, exactly. Yeah. And a good example of this is actually osteoarthritis, and that sort of links in with the other things that we can inject. So, another substance that I'll inject is something called hyaluronic acid, which is essentially a lubricating agent that's produced naturally within joints, but can be less abundant in certain conditions, in particular osteoarthritis. And uh, if it's less abundant, the knee perhaps doesn't have the same lubrication or shock absorption. So if I'm scanning somebody who has a, either a known history or a suspicion of osteoarthritis, we can scan and we can use a particular function called Doppler imaging. And Doppler tells us if you have extra blood vessel formation around that joint. And that is very closely linked with the presence of inflammation or something called synovitis. So you might know that anything with itis at the end yes, means yes. inflammation. Okay. And the, the, the sinal bit refers to the synovial lining or the membrane that goes around about the joint. So essentially we're looking at inflammation of, of the, the, the joint lining. In those circumstances, we might choose to consider a steroid injection. It's not mandatory by any means, but if people's pain, uh, if the pain levels are very high and their disability is also quite high as a result of that, we might consider a steroid injection in those circumstances. Steroid as well after that, or, so it's either or? Yeah, uh, either or. Either yeah, or, okay. Generally okay. be the case, yeah. because the hyaluronic acid tends not to work well in these highly inflammatory situations. Okay. But people can have mechanical pain, as you put it, so um, they, they might have pain related to the knee, but we scan them, there's no swelling, there's no local signs of inflammation, but they still have knee, uh, pain that's very much uh, coming from the, the knee joint, for example, in which case we could consider the hyaluronic acid lubricating injection. Okay. So the ultrasound is actually quite an important part of that reasoning process right. so that we can determine what's the most appropriate treatment. So more targeted, so much to get a better outcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so some folk, you know, will come here and say, oh, I've been injected in the past, sort of elsewhere, and they haven't necessarily been scanned yeah. and they've been injected and um, but and i mean that's fine that's common practice yes yeah. yeah. so based on anatomical landmarks and, and the skill of the um, palpation and of the practitioner Absolutely. delivering the injection yeah. but there is an advantage to scanning and then injecting or scanning yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. I, I think the, the other point to clarify is the differentiation between uh, you uh, described it as landmark guided injections, okay. which, as you rightly say, is where you know the clinician will use their examination skills, uh, detailed palpation skills to locate where they want to inject, um, versus guided injections or image guided injections. And then, in particular, I perform all of my injections under ultrasound guidance. What that means is that I have the probe in one hand looking at the target region or target structure and have the needle on the other hand and we pass the needle underneath the probe, the ultrasound probe, 
So I can actually directly visualize that needle on the screen and guide it absolutely accurately towards the target region. So that, that's a key differential. Um, now, there are some injection procedures that you just wouldn't, simply wouldn't undertake without image guidance because of safety. Mm -hmm. So that the overall repertoire of injections that I can offer doing an ultrasound guided are greater than doing things landmark guided. Okay, so someone yeah. might get and um, refer to somebody who then would refer them to you because you you yeah. scan them and they yeah. don't yeah. exactly that happens <laughs> and also there's the the, uh, the the topic of accuracy as well so it kind of stands to reason that uh, the more accurate accurate you are uh, the more likely the um, injection is, is going to be successful mm -hmm. essentially um, so if most of the practitioner doing it a landmark way then the more that they're doing the more skillful they are a palpation is a skill isn't it, it so, it is, so and, if you're just doing it on an ad hoc basis it's potentially not as <clears throat> yeah there, there mm -hmm. are studies showing that obviously the, the higher volume of these things that you do generally whether it be landmark guided injections or whether it be ultrasound guided injections the more skilled and competent you're going to be as a result of that um, in addition, there are plenty of studies demonstrating that ultrasound guided injections are more accurate than landmark guided injections. Okay. And it's not to say that landmark guided injections can be effective and can't be um, appropriately administered, absolutely not. And plenty of people receive these from very skilled clinicians and have a, a good outcome um, from it. Um, but from my perspective, it's almost a no-brainer. I trained to do the scanning mm -hmm. and I trained to do the injecting and we combined the skills together and trained to do ultrasound guided injections. And just as I was saying, you know, if you are doing, if you're repeating that skill frequently, you're going to maintain and, and, and keep that high skill level. So I perform all of them ultrasound guided okay. um, for that reason. Good. So I hope that has clarified a few things for you folks in terms of what the scan is, what the injection is, and how they're offered together by Stuart. So Stuart, I've got a few and um, a few questions for you. So um, this kind of came up last week, and um, in terms of a referral for physio, but someone wanted to know: Do they need a doctor's referral to attend for um, scan and injection? Yeah, and um, doctor's referral is always welcome, but absolutely not necessary. Um, so as Physiotherapists, we are autonomous practitioners. We can see people as a, as a first point of uh, access to care for, for that sort of problem. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, to that end, uh, certainly within our teams, you know, we're all uh, trained to assess people for, first of all, for the appropriateness of yeah. physiotherapy intervention, whether that be um, either more traditional physio approach or including scans or injections. But, Short answer is they can come directly to. And us. am I right in saying that you have a Google form that folk can kind of fill in as a bit of a screening process yeah, exactly. and help you to, to triage them if you like so that they're not wasting their time? Or, yeah. Exactly. So uh, if people are, are considering an injection, they can go to the relevant section of our website, the ultrasound guided injections uh, section on the website. And on there, there's a online inquiry form and uh, essentially ask some pertinent questions to gain some information as to whether that person might be um, appropriate for injection. Um, if there are any queries there, I, I would uh, follow up with that patient either by phone or email just to, to clarify. Um, and, and again, one of the great processes that we have established with the, the, the brilliant software we've got in the clinic is that Every patient prior to attending will get a post-COVID screening form, yes. but within that we have a clinical triage section as well, so it might ask if it asks about their symptoms, and have they sought other treatment, do they have a diagnosis, um, have, have, uh, have they got any other medical conditions that might be relevant. So that allows us to triage appropriately and um, if need be we can follow up with people prior to attending. Um, Someone um, is, is saying here, I think I might benefit from an injection, but I'm not great with needles and I'm afraid of feet down. Is this, uh, is this a real concern? So it's a rare occurrence that people should feed, but it is uh, a possibility. <clears throat> so I, I spend a lot of time um, on the consent process with people 
and we discuss that. And I always like to know to have people had experiences of injections, do they feel comfortable for needles or not, and I try and suss that out because we can be sympathetic to that. You know, if, if somebody is um, understandably apprehensive about mm -hmm. it, then I'll be so discreet I, yeah. with uh, prepare things and not kind of glowing up and get it in the <laughs> exactly. And uh, you know, with the uh, with the guided injections, often people will be able to see this if they choose, they'll be able to see the right. image on the screen and they'll see the needle coming in. Right. And uh, some people find that fascinating. In fact, the, the most uh, uh, memorable uh, situation there was a chap who was so interested he asked if he could video this on his GoPro camera for his YouTube channel, which he did. Uh, so somewhere right, on, on YouTube you'll find, uh, you'll find that uh, vlog somewhere. Um, and then of course at the opposite end of the spectrum, folk just don't want to see anything to do with needles whatsoever, in which case I can actually change because my setup. So the um, screen's out of your eye so shot. Not, right. I don't have one set way of doing things. Um, you know, I, I scan and inject with both hands so I can change to, to face another way and then keep people comfortable. Okay, so it could happen, but you're prepared for it exactly. and, and we, you we can deal with it. Pretty happens. much inject the um on the table. <clears throat> so if they're not feeling great, they're either lying down already or they can be quickly lowered down right. and that pretty much resolves uh, a fainting episode. So I hope that puts your mind at rest and you might feel a bit more confident um, to, to explore um, sort of further. Um, someone saying, I think I've got a frozen shoulder according to Dr. Google. So yeah. <laughs> and is this something that you could help me with? Yeah, absolutely. So frozen shoulder is actually a bit, bit of a passion of mine. I know it's Sounds a bit sad, but it is. Oh, no, we all know you're in that, in that um, game. <laughs> so, frozen shoulder is a bit of a passion because A, I've, I've always liked shoulder problems, but B, um, prior to doing the injecting, it was a, a deep source of frustration clinically because you, know, you could be working hard with patients and their exercises to stretch this frozen shoulder out. Um, and I'm really often not making much progress, but watching them. In, in quite a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And if people haven't either witnessed somebody experience a frozen shoulder or um, experienced it themselves, it can be an exceptionally debilitating condition, mm -hmm. not to mention exceptionally painful as well, causing things like sleep disturbance and, and all sorts. Um, but injection therapy really is a, it's a brilliant option for people who have a frozen shoulder. Of course, the first step is to the term is a frozen it's shoulder. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a common <laughs> misdiagnosis actually. Yeah, okay. um, and, and actually in its early stages it can be hard to diagnose because it can masquerade as, as other uh, shoulder conditions. But uh, when it's established it's, it's, um, it's often very easy to see to the trained eye. Um, so making sure that that is the diagnosis is uh, also paramount to, to get an appropriate intervention. In terms of injections, there are a few different options. Um, we're pretty much always, if we're going down the injection route, going to utilise steroids, cortisone, um, because it, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's quite a, a potent inflammatory um, presentation. That uh, maybe it's worth just talking a wee bit about fro what frozen shoulder is. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. Briefly. Well, so if, if this is the capsule <laughs> around about the shoulder, normally it allows for lots of free movement. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, frozen shoulder, inflammation and contracture of the capsule means that it tightens so people can't move it and they get lots of pain. So essentially we would inject into the ball and socket joint plus or minus a second little injection on top to calm that inflammation. But there is the additional option of doing what's called a hydro distension or a hydro dilatation, which is a slightly more specialised procedure that we again of course do under ultrasound guidance where we uh, use local anaesthetic and um, steroid, and then we use saline or salt water to essentially distend or stretch the capsule. So we put quite a high volume of solution inside the shoulder joint and stretch it out. And it's generally pretty well tolerated, but the effects from that can actually be quite dramatic. Um, you know, for some people, they, they can almost have close to an instant improvement in their range of movement. Um, the effects of the steroid can continue to work, so we'll have improvement over the coming weeks as, as well. So that brings us to the next question. So 
and how long can I expect to take it and to take to see or to feel um, an improvement post injection? So am I going to come in here and, and I'm going to go out thinking, oh, my pain's gone, my movement's back, or is it going to continue improving over a couple of weeks, yeah, or is that like how lots of pieces yeah, of No surprise to, to you to, to <laughs> hear that, that that is the, the, the honest answer is it should be able because of all potentially complicated influencing factors involved with someone's presentation and their recovery, and um, you know, it, it, how, how the, what the problem is, how it's presented, but also their interaction with the drug, just as the drug's interaction with them right. is another factor to consider. But if I can try and simplify it, generally with a steroid injection, if you've picked the patient appropriately and it's quite an, a, an inflammatory uh, problem, then they're likely to have decent pain improvement within the first week. Okay. Okay. And um, sometimes that can take a couple of weeks to hit full effects. Right. If it's the more of the mechanical thing we talked about, that kind of drug PD that is used in inflammatory, which used to do a hyaluronic acid, it tends to be a little bit longer before they really feel the effects. So somewhere between two to four weeks before they really feel like, okay, this is great. Now that can be different. Some people think that feels great right away, and um, but on average, a little bit quicker with steroids in the right circumstances and a little bit longer with the hyaluronic acid. But the effects can be longer lasting typically in hyaluronic acid. Again, with the right patient, um, and the steroid effects can often be a wee bit uh, shorter lived, which is why it's important <laughs> to follow up with the appropriate ongoing management. Yes, it's so, not just this magic. It's not just it's right there, yeah. it's off you go. So How much? What we're going to do next? Are we going to address uh, underpinning causative factors or associated factors, strength deficits, flexibility deficits, and that's where I always give people a little bit of a head start with the exercises. And um, if they're an in-house referral from another physio, go back and see them. Yeah. It's an external referral from another physio, also back to, back to the doctor, onward referral, detailed information back to them. There's always that danger for people beginning to feel so good and they're moving better than they have. Which and, and, then, and then they do too much and, yep. and they're you know, yeah, yeah, set themselves back. So always try and that. create some realistic expectations for people as best as best we can. Good. Have you got a, a last um, kind of word of wisdom for us to take us through the next week? Um, yeah, physiotherapy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really like David's actually, which is invest in your own health. And, and I think, you know, to maybe tie that up with uh, the injection stuff, you know, I know, I know that uh, for some people, injections um, aren't necessarily an appealing thought, but um, if you're in pain, it has a big impact on the, the overall well-being. And if you think that an injection might be indicated for you, then don't get it off, reach out, and we'll see if it's something we can help with. Okay, that's great. Thank you yeah, for taking you. the time out. Folks, thank you for joining us over, over your lunchtime. And um, I hope you've learned more and understand a bit more about the service um, that is offered by Stuart here at, at Life at Wellness. And um, so bear that in mind if either you or perhaps someone um, that you know um, is in pain and you think could benefit from scanning injection. So next week um, in the hot seat, we're putting Emmett. And Emmett's going to talk about all things golf to us. So um, he's based at Kingsfield, which is a um, local golf centre on the outskirts of Lonesco. And so as well as working here, he does some clinics there. And uh, he's going to tell us a bit about that and relate his physio experience um, to, to golfers. So join us then if you've got any um, golfing questions or you want any top tips to improve your swing, then tune in to, to hear Emma next week. Okay, folks, thanks, Melin. Bye.